It has been a couple of weeks since we came back from our short road trip through Europe. We are now back in Denmark at our studio. It's cold. Yeah, it's cold, but it's manageable. It's manageable. It's not too bad, but it's getting used to. It's uh, adjusting. Yeah. <laughs> at the beginning of our road trip, we went to visit our friends Ollie and Sefi at their eco village in the mountains of France. And in our last video, we showed you our stay there. While we were at Ollie and Sefi's eco village, they told us the reasons why they're doing this project and we are going to share that with you in this video. Probably the most unhappy I've been was when I had the most opportunity and the most availability around me of like the most uh, abundance. Now, Ollie and Sefi have been our friends for quite a long time and ever since we first met them, we've seen how resourceful, how creative they are. These guys are amazing. I have no doubt that they are going to make this eco-village just amazing. They're obviously just at the start of their project. Yeah, they've had it for like, I don't know, half a year. And there's a lot of hard work ahead of them, but we're absolutely certain they're just gonna make it great. And I really hope that we can continue going to visit them and then showing you the progress. Yeah, so this is our little village. It's hard to find out how far back it goes. The earliest map of France, this, this is already here and is an established hamlet. This place, a hundred years ago, had uh, 60 inhabitants, over four families. Uh, now it's us two and our dog, and that's it. But we're going to hopefully share it with more people. Yeah, make the I mean, that's again. the plan, is, yeah make the village great again. <laughs> yeah. So that's a slogan we can coin. <laughs> Initially, yeah, it was Portugal. But the idea was always to be in like a community type living scenario in nature and being as self-sufficient as possible. Yeah. Our dream, craft university. Yeah, like a university where people can learn, they can stay, residencies and essentially have all of our hobbies combined and available for all of our friends to join in and for any other people who have something to bring to the table. So like a huge part of our raison d'être, I don't know, like our life. Joie de vivre. <laughs> uh, like we are really, really about craft. Making we, things with your hands. The, the, the one of the biggest problems that we have today is disposable culture. And I, I promise that if people made their own things, if if you make a cup or a knife, that that knife and that cup will be with you for life. It's not going to be thrown away. It's not going to be. Even if it breaks, you can fix it. it. It it's it's just you need once you've made an object, you understand the value of an object. And, and we, also the tangibility of transforming something that you've found in nature and yeah, transforming it into something helpful, either like a tool or, I don't know, yeah, like a cup. I don't know, it can be super simple, but there's a joy in that. And I mean, as humans, that's how we've evolved, right? But we just want to take it down a notch, not quite to the techno level. I think we're losing how to make things. Well, yeah, it's something that we need to relearn and remember that it's, actually, it's not Amazon that provides, it's we provide, we can and do that. And you can do it and it's extremely empowering to be able to tell yourself that you are capable of doing that as well. There's a different key. Yeah. Oh my God, that threw me right off. There's a huge amount of pleasure and joy in hard work and doing things properly, slowly, grafting and like doing things, yeah, doing things traditionally. 
and it means like when when you've cut a beam with an axe or with an adze and you've squared it and you've done you know everything that needs to be done to make a beam it sounds like a simple thing to have but when you've cut your own beam by hand every time you go to an old building and you see the lines in the wood you're like okay my man you know there's like a huge <laughs> amount of respect there for like all of these kind of crafts that we just take massively for granted yeah because you just don't think where this stuff comes from every stone is cut by hand that's a dude with a chisel you know and like i think it's a, there's a big part of like we need to give the respect to the stones that have been left to us to actually like carry on that legacy and actually properly work them yeah. and do things correctly like we want to respect the building as we'd respect any of our friends you know what i mean you don't if you're going to do something do it properly there's a there's a big problem with old knowledges being lost uh i i've done a lot of work around like ac traditional axe work and coppice work uh so it made a lot of sense to have a chestnut grow like a chestnut coppice so i can uh i can you know practice my trade there uh, but generally, uh, I've spent a fair few years working, rebuilding old houses. If you want to restore something and rebuild something, you have to do it as it was supposed to be done. You have to, you have to follow the correct methods. It's also a lot of time. <laughs> it's a huge amount of time. So yeah, a bit of both, but mainly trying to be as eco. It's ecological, it's logic, it's sustainable, it's local. But it's like, if you want to colour the lime that you're using, we went through trying pigments and they all look plastic and disgusting. Yeah. So we take the earth and we try it with the earth and it colours it beautifully. Well, it's not just everything takes longer. Everything takes time. I remember yeah. in the first week we would eat like pretty much one, maybe once a day, once every two days because it took. Because we didn't <coughs> have a kitchen, really. We didn't. We didn't have a kitchen. We didn't and have we a didn't gas have stove. Electricity. I would make a fire on the floor here. For a long time, it was just like not eating, not having anywhere to sit down. Because you have to bear in mind, like if you don't have chairs. You either have to make them or find them, but I'm not going to buy plastic rubbish. That's not going to happen. We couldn't even be here. Like, this was impossible before. Like, this was, uh, oh, yeah, it was just there was just brambles to brambles. about, like, three metres. There was, With like... a tiny path that would go to the kitchen. There was, like, three trees growing out of the house. This, uh, you would not see. No, that wasn't there. That was <laughs> impossible. Uh, it was just huge. It was just a complete... It was to the point where the hunters, like a couple of years ago, were shooting wild boar on our terrace. Like it was, uh, I mean, it was full jungle. Like, uh, so just when you arrive somewhere and your starting point is so brutal, like dry toilet, simple thing. It did not get done. Like, oh no, yeah, it, there was no walls. Out. That was fine. Yeah, so like, <laughs> I only built the walls when I knew there was like a friend of ours girlfriend was coming, and I felt really bad for her having to poo in front of people. Pooper, so yeah, shy poopers needed put help. Some curtains up. <laughs> but like, generally, there's when you start on a project like this, you don't realise the basic lack of everything. You've always got to be searching for wood. Because without wood, you're not eating, you don't have hot water, and you're cold. And we didn't have electricity, so you don't even have light, like it's, which is intense. I, I, I reckon generally humanity has an issue. We have, people have a real issue at the moment of um, how things are going with uh, consummation, with everything being ready-made and all of these things just being readily available. And no, no the one's worth seen, of... The worth of everything has dropped and no one is happy. I, I, I know I went through a long time of being very unhappy and, may, and I think probably the most unhappy I've been was when I had the most, uh, the most opportunity and the most availability around me of like the most uh, abundance you'd say like you know, going to restaurants and going to bars city. and when we lived in the city and it was just, uh, there was always things to do. There was always out, out drinks and food and all yeah. sorts. But none of it makes you happy. So you have to reassess. For what, us anyway. Yeah, for us, but you have to reassess what makes you human. Like, like, well, yeah, I don't know. Like, also, everyone has their own way. Of, for sure, for anyone us, can live as they want. We know, cannot but. live in the city. We tried it and it was, we did not further ourselves as human beings in our opinion and we feel like we can do this here. 
I, I think it's something that will help a lot of people as well to have a space that's open and available for people that need to be away from, you know, their own like personal Babylon, you know, like this, their own like, their, their, their own, everyone's got their own hamster wheel and everyone's got their own like blinkers. And it would be really nice to have a space that's just neutral, natural and open with everything there ready to create and to learn your own capabilities, to really like yeah. grow um, and a, ve a very easy way to learn your self-worth is by learning what you're capable of and what you're capable of creating. And I think if we can make a space that, where we can do at least that, it will be a really, really cool place to be. Yeah. I don't know if I do. Say, don't you worry, you made my honey. We might not have any money, but baby, we've got love to pay the bills. Maybe you think I'm cute and funny and maybe you wanna do what Barney's do with you if you know what I mean So let's get rich and buy our parents' homes in the south of France Let's get rich Let's get 